My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins, for the grace to make this time a prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. This is the first verse of Psalm 23. Lord Jesus, it's so beautiful and so reassuring that the church puts before us Psalm 23 so many times in the liturgy in different settings and circumstances, an assurance of God's care for us, of God's protection. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want in verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. I remember there was an essay that I read once by a woman who was a convert to Catholicism. And she was recounting her early brushes with Christianity. And she had a cousin who was from a Protestant family. And this cousin would go off to a Bible camp every summer. And there at Bible camp, she would memorize different verses, different passages from Scripture. And one of the things her cousin had memorized was precisely Psalm 23. And this um, lady commented that her cousin would recite it very quickly and with a different translation. And she would say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so when she came to read scripture for herself and read this psalm, she said, well, thank God for punctuation, because her cousin would read it rather quickly, and she would just say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And she took away from that, that the Lord was the shepherd that the girl didn't want to be her shepherd, the shepherd she doesn't want. And so the semicolon there helped her. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And I won't need anything. I won't have to worry about anything. The Lord will provide. That's a very deep sentiment. And the saints have experienced this and taught it to us and encouraged us to have the same kind of total dependence on God. St. Teresa of Avila, for example, in a beautiful prayer, says that God alone suffices. He who has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. He who has God lacks nothing. There's another traditional prayer in the church. Deus meus et omnia. My God and my all. My God and my all. St. Francis of Assisi once spent at least one entire night, repeating that aspiration in prayer in a cave. My God and my all, Deus meus et omnia. And so maybe, Lord Jesus, in this time of prayer, we can use this sentiment as a spur and look into our heart and see, how much do I depend on you, Lord? How anxious and worried am I about many other things? because I don't trust you enough to take care of me. I don't trust your providence enough. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. In times, Lord, of darkness, in times of trouble and of anxiety. Remind me, Jesus, that you're not far from me. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And you're with me, Lord, with your power. You're with me, with your love for me. You're with me, with your knowledge of everything I am and everything that I'm going through. And so there's nothing really that we should fear even though on the human level, many things will cause us some consternation or some anxiety or some initial fear. 
if we live through those things with prayer and if we try to interpret those things in the light of our faith, we come to the conclusion that there's really nothing to be afraid of. We're in God's hands. We're in Jesus' hands. Jesus is real and powerful and close to us. So even if terrible, sometimes tragic things happen, well, our Lord will give us the grace to live through it with him, to live through it depending on him, to live through it in the best way possible with hope, faith, and charity, still being pleasing to God, even though humanly speaking, life can be very difficult and very threatening at times. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you, Jesus, are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Jesus, you say this yourself at the Last Supper in St. John's account of that priestly discourse. Jesus says, In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. It's a beautiful thing to reflect on and think about, especially in times, again, of uncertainty or times of difficulty. Jesus knows that life is hard. Jesus doesn't tell his disciples, well, because you're my disciples, I'll always get you out of trouble and life will be real easy and there's nothing to worry about. No, Jesus says, in the world, you will have tribulations. Things will be difficult. Things will be threatening. People will persecute you. You will suffer illness and death and misunderstanding and hatred. But in spite of all that, even with those things happening, Jesus says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. He doesn't say, it's okay because you're tough enough. It's okay because you can handle it. It's okay because it doesn't really matter. He says, no, it's okay because of me. It's okay because I have overcome the world. It's okay because I am the good shepherd. Nothing will happen to you without my knowledge. Nothing will happen to you, at least without my permission, which means that I'll be there with you and I'm going to help you through this in the best possible way. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I've always found this line very charming. Only goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life. We can imagine you know, two characters who are kind of trailing us, however, however you'd like to imagine them. Maybe men in overcoats, some sort of obvious spies in some spy story. And you turn around and you see them clearly for a second and then they disappear behind a house. And you walk a little bit longer and you turn around again and you see their heads poking out and they're still trailing you. And who are these two characters? Well, they're goodness and kindness because God loves us, because we're in God's charge because God is our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. And this kind of confidence takes practice. The way we grow in trust is to live through difficulty with faith. It's not to avoid difficulty. It's not to expect God to make difficulties go away quickly It's not to try to find just the perfect prayer, the perfect combination of a trustful attitude and the right novena and, oh, this is the one that works. Make sure you pray this specific novena to Saint so-and-so for this amount of time and then all your problems will go away. That's not the way it works. The way we grow in trust and the way we grow in the real experience and awareness of God's providence is by living through difficulties, living through anxiety, living through fear, living through suffering with faith, with trust, with prayer. In the world, you will have tribulations. This will happen to you, but it's not going to crush you. 
because I have overcome the world. St. John in his epistle, in one of his epistles, says a similar thing. He says, this is 